Hello, this is Bradley Cromar from the Maths Department, and this is a continuation of Lesson 5 dealing with the normal distributions. And so now we're going to compare scores or z-scores across uh, different distributions. And here's an example of dealing with batting averages uh, from baseball. These four baseball players, Ted Williams in 1941, Rod Crew in, I believe, 1977, George Brett in 1980, and Tony Gwynn in 1994 had great bat batting averages. Now, for those who don't know, this, for instance, 406, when you bat 0 .406, that means that every time you're at bat, you got at least a base hit or got on first base about 40% of the time, which is very high in baseball. Rod Crew was .388, George Brett was .39, and Tony Gwynn was .394. Now, we can take these different baseball players and different errors and actually compare their z-scores because we have the mean batting averages for those years as well as the standard deviation. So we can get the z-scores to say relative to the given season who had a more extreme or unusual value. So if you want to stop the video, calculate the z-scores and then compare the results, well, we can do that. Okay, so let's look at Ted Williams' z-score. The z-score, uh, for all four of them, the z-score for Ted Williams was 0.3788. Rod Cruz is 4.111. George Brez was 0.3964. And Tony Gwynn's was 3.156. So even though the batting average for Rod Crew was the smallest, but because the mean was was smaller between the other four, the, the other three, and and Rod Crew's or excuse me the standard deviation for that year was also the smallest, it was a very high z score. So for that particular year, Rod Crew perhaps had a more unusual event or value compared to the other years. That Tim Williams had a 406, George Brett had a 0.39, and Tony Gwynn had a 0.294. So you can compare if if uh, if you have normal distributions, you can compare several different distributions uh, and get a, say for instance, if someone has an ACT score and somebody else took the SAT, we can compare to see who had a higher Z score because you, you know you can get the mean and standard deviation from either one of those two tests to see who had a higher score, so to speak, or quote unquote higher score. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about converting a Z score to probability. Okay. So there are two different steps of computing this, of taking a z-score to probability. First, we get a z-score, that's step one, convert the value of x using the standard normal variable z, or find the z-score. And then find the area under the standard normal curve by using the applet. And this is the applet. Um, in fact, the applet, if, uh, if you click on this here, if, um, or not click on this, but there's a link. There's a link that you have on, on the uh, online um, textbook as well as in iLearn. But if you click on that link, you'll get an applet that looks like this. Okay, it's a nice applet. You can also use this on your phone as well, um, if you like. It's very, it's it, it's compatible to, uh, to an iPhone or a, or any type of smartphone. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll go through these two steps with a couple of examples. Okay, so first of all, the length of a human pregnancy from conception to birth is norm is the norm is normally distributed with a mean of 266 days and a standard deviation of 16 days. What's the probability that a pregnancy lasts less than 240 days? So first of all, let's go through these two steps. So we want to get the z-score for this x, which is 240. So we take 240 minus the mean, which is 266, divided by the standard deviation, which is 16 days. When we solve for the z-score, we get a z-score of negative 1.625. Okay? So then what we can do is, is that we can go, let me escape out of this, go to the applet. And what we would do is we would type in negative 1.625, press enter, and then we're looking for less than, less than, and so it's shown right here in terms of what to do. So we only shade to the left. And so we get up here the probability, and so in this case the probability is 0 0.0521. So I rounded here three decimal places to the right. So the probability is about 5.2% uh, of 0 0.052. Okay, so for the next problem, same same context, but now I'm asking for what's the probability that pregnancy lasts more than 27 days. So if you want to stop the video and go through it on your own, and then and then go through your answer, go through the answer. That's fine. Okay, so to get the z-score, you take 270 minus the mean, which is 266, divided by the, the standard deviation, which is 16. Then we get a z-score of 0.25. So then we go to the applet, and so where do you think we would shade here? It's asking for more than 270 days. Well, we would shade to the right of the z-score of 0.25, and so if we do that, we shade to the right, 
we get the probability here. So the probability of a pregnancy lasting more than 270 days is about 40%. Okay. So then the last problem here, the length of human pregnancy from conception and birth that is normally distributed mean 266 days, standard deviation 16 days. What's the probability that the pregnancy lasts between 241 and 291 days? So there's two z-scores that you have to compute here. Okay. So what you can do is, is that I calculated both of them here. So if we, so for 241, the z-score for that one is negative 1.563. The z-score for for 291 is 1.563. These both are equidistant from the mean, so that makes it a little bit easier. So if you go to the applet, you can find that uh, if you put in 1.563, shade the middle, because we're looking for between, then we would get a probability of about, about uh, 88%. Okay. So now, uh, item number five, percentiles for a normal distribution. Now. What we would do is we would use the applets, and I and I have two slides here in terms of how, how to go about using the applets okay, to get your percentile. So first of all, a percentile, if my height is in the 70th percentile, that means that I am taller in terms of males, and if I'm in the 70th percentile, my height, I'm greater than 70, I'm taller than 70% of all males. Okay? Conversely, that means I'm shorter than 30% of all males. So what I would do is, is that, say for instance, if I'm interested in getting a percentile using the applet, very first thing is what we would do is we'd click on the left side here because we're looking for all the, all the people or items that, I, that, that are all the people in terms of height that I'm greater than, okay? So say, for instance, I'm interested in the 40th percentile. So what, what I would do is, is that I'd go up here, type in 0 0.40, and then press Enter, and then the area becomes bigger, okay? Then what I would do is that I would take the number that's, on, that's next to the left red line which is negative 0.253, plug it into this formula here. Now, this formula is just basically the z-score, but, but we're solving for x instead of z. And we put z in here with, say, if we have a mean of 266 days of standard deviation 60. Now, I, have an I used an example earlier of height, but with pregnancies, if, if the mean is 266 days standard deviation 16, we plug that into our formula and we would get an x equal to 260, about 262 days. So that's the 40th percentile. Now, if we did something, and this is a little bit, a, 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 a little slight difference here. If we had something that was above a 50th percentile, then what we would do first is to shade both the left and the middle. And then what we would do is, is that then we can go to the, the top of the applet, type in 0.9, so, so if we're doing the 90th percentile, we would uh, type in the 90th percentile in decimal form, which is 0.9. We'd press enter, and then we would get a number over here to the right. We'd look to the number to the next to the right red line here, which is 1.282. And then we would plug it into the same formula again, to this time to get the 90th percentile. So we plug it in with our mean of 266 days, standard deviation of 16. We would get a x equal to about 286 or 287. And that's how we get percentiles. So first, we would, for the less than 50th percentile, we shade to the left, type in the percentile in decimal form, get our z-score, and then we would solve using this formula that's solving for x and rather than z. And then for above the 50th percentile, we would shade not just the left, but the middle. And then we would get um, our z-score, plug it into the formula with the mean and the standard deviation, and solve for x to get uh, that percentile. So we're, in this case, it's the 90th percentile. Lastly, QQ plots for assessing normality. You can get QQ plots, and the, and the explanations are in the online textbook for both Excel and SPSS. But basically, uh, to read a QQ plot, if all the points are right at the line when you're doing a QQ plot, you can assume that the data is normally distributed. Here's an example of heart rate data, heart, or any type of body measurement is typically normally distributed. And then over here on the right, we can see that it's kind of looking like centipede a little bit, where it's where where it's really a lot of the points are really not at the line. And this is an, this is wage data. In fact, uh, any type of income or, or wage data is typically right skewed. And so if you do a QQ plot on that, you'll see that it really doesn't fit the line very well. Okay. And so that concludes um, the lesson five videos for normal distribution. If you have any questions, please speak to your instructors or your TA. Or your